Hello everyone, welcome to the Lisa Loves Stitch and Floss Tube. This is my channel where I talk about cross stitch. My name's Lisa, by the way, in case you haven't seen me before. And um, this channel is mainly about cross stitch, sometimes a little bit about my other crafts like knitting or sewing. And um, I'm coming to you from warm Brisbane. <laughs> it doesn't, the, it's getting a bit whited out there, but the sky is actually really blue. <laughs> But because I've got my back to it, I guess it's um, playing up with the camera. Um, anyway, I'm coming to you from hot Brisbane. <laughs> it's um, about 31 or 32 degrees today and quite humid. So hopefully we get some rain later today. Um, I've taken my glasses off because of the reflection. <laughs> and I forgot to bring out my readers, which uh, have the anti-glare on them. Sooty's just, my dog Sooty is just... Um, wandering around on the deck and um, you can't see it here but there's scaffold all up um, along our roof edge at the front of our garage and at the front of our bedroom um, because recently we had um, found that our solar system wasn't working we've only been in here about 18 months and I think it's probably about 10 years old but um, we had a, about a 4 kilowatt system and uh, it just randomly stopped working one day recently. So we got a solar guy in and he found that possums who had been living underneath the panels had actually chewed through the wires and they were buggered. So thank goodness for um, house insurance um, because the insurer came through and um, gave us the $6,000 to replace the same with the same system and then we um, decided to add on some money to upgrade it further to a from a 4 kilowatt to a 10 kilowatt system so hopefully fingers crossed now once that um, our next bill comes in we may get a zero bill or even get paid money for our extra electricity um, so that'll be nice not to get an electricity bill <laughs> Um, previously when we were on the 4 kilowatt system we try to use things throughout the day when the sun's out um, mostly you know like the washing machine dishwasher and all that sort of thing um, and it, we were getting halved bills so instead of $500 it was about $250 for the bill each quarter and now that we're going to 10 kilowatts we should be getting paid money so we should be earning money rather than paying money out to the um, electricity company which is a big bonus um, yeah so we had some very efficient um, scaffolders come in and put up edge protection for the guys who were going to install just so if they slipped they wouldn't necessarily uh, fall off the edge of the roof and um, and then yesterday they spent all day um, installing those panels. They have to come back Monday to put some um, mesh around the edge of the panels to stop any um, critters getting in there. So if you're in Australia and you have possums on your roof and you've got solar panels, I would recommend you get someone in to um, put some mesh around the edge of your solar panels so that they can't chew through the wires otherwise you know just for a small system it was like six grand and if you don't have it covered by insurance you're buggered <laughs> um so yeah so i'm out on the deck and just relaxing um i put i've got a noisy crow back there it's got a baby it's driving me crackers um yeah, so it's Saturday the, is it the 6th? Saturday the 6th of February. And, uh, oh, I got a new phone this week, a um, Samsung uh, S21 Ultra 5G. Um, it's really nice. I'm waiting on a case coming, so I'm a bit paranoid that something's going to happen to it. <laughs> um, what else? I don't think we've got any other news. I cooked a, I baked a, a love heart shaped chocolate cake for Wayne yesterday, so we've been enjoying that. And just work as normal. I did put in for leave for um, Easter, so I'm going to have three weeks off over Easter, coming back to work after, the day after Anzac Day, which is the, I'll be back the 26th of um, April. 
So that'll be bliss. We're not going anywhere. Um, but I just needed a break. <laughs> I didn't take one over Christmas really other than the bare essentials. So it'll just be good to have. Maybe we'll get to go for a couple of day trips or something. That'll be good. Yeah. So anyway, so I think that's all my news. So let's get into the stitching. I have something exciting for you today. I have a fully finished, professionally framed project to show you. Um, hopefully the glare won't make it too hard to see. I've got some whips that I've been working on. I can't remember exactly what I showed you last time, so sorry if I'm showing you the same thing. Um, and some shop update. So, let's get started on the exciting bit, which is the fully framed project. I finished this project in... 2019 I took a month to stitch it around Easter I started it I think on Good Friday 2019 and I finished it a month exactly a month later and I stitched on this while I was in Perth um, for work for training and um, it's called the Old White Farmhouse Sampler by Stacey Nash it is very hard to come by now so if you want it there is a shop in Canada that has them but I don't know how many that they have. Um, let me just quickly see if I can find... Because I helped someone else the other day. Uh, traditionalstitches.com So they're in Canada. So they have um, the chart with the called for color work, classic colourworks threads. Um, but I could not find anywhere else with it so if you would like this because you see and you like it go to traditionalstitches.com and have a look at that and um, see if they've got any left um, so yes yeah, so it took me a month to stitch it um, I just the colors just spoke to me they're just really soft blues and teals um, and here's the back <laughs> So I got it framed at Keynote Picture Framing at Everton Hills and they did an exceptional job. And on the back I have the um, the project sticker for that I bought from Lindy Stitches and I put all the details on there. I actually stuffed it up and had to put a second sticker over the top of the old one because I messed it up. Um, so yeah, so it's all ready to hang and he even put some little felt bits here so that it doesn't rub on the wall and here it is so I went with a simple classic frame and it's got another frame so the wood behind is actually the glasses between this bit and the wood behind and it's sort of got a um, it's a cream edge but it almost looks gold and sorry for the glare oh, that's a bit better but yeah so that's it there it's gorgeous I'll try and insert a picture so you can see it properly but yeah I just love the colors the big white farmhouse that was awesome to stitch on I love this vine going across here this berry bowl the dog the goat the giant vase I just loved all of it it's just so pretty so yeah so I really like this frame that the framer helped pick out and just as a guide here in Australia, I had been previously quoted in Brisbane CBD for $450 Australian. And I got it for $233 fully framed at Keynote Framing. So go and check them out. I'll put a link below if you're local. They are really good and quick service. I only had it in for about a week and a half or two weeks and it was done. So I'm looking forward, now I know what, I've got other samplers similar, like Green Gables and that, that are a similar size, so now I know roughly what I'm going to be paying. Um, so once I save up the money, I'll get the others framed. So yay, I'm so happy with it. <laughs> and it's so nice to finally have some stitching framed um, that I can hang on the wall. I just need to find the right spot for it. At the moment it's hanging on some hooks in my craft room but I want to maybe put it in the hallway and start like a sample wall so anyway we'll see how it goes so that's that one 
Sorry, that's the most exciting bit of the whole episode today. So, whips. My most recent whip, which I worked on this week, which I only worked on for half a week because last weekend and the weekend before I've been working on an assignment and I didn't hand it in until last week. So, um... So anyway, so it didn't get a lot done on it, but I did make some decent progress, if that makes sense. Also from um, Mushrooms in Bloom on Etsy, it's an Australian company, I got this cute kitty um, oort catcher. It's really hard to get them in Australia, and it just come, pops out like that. And I put my oughts in there. If you're not sure what an oort is, it's just your leftover thread that you cut off after you finish stitching an area. Um, so yeah, so that's really good in there. And um, it fits nicely back in my bag. So I'm really happy with that. I'll try and put the link for that below. So this is Sarah Newman 1822, which I started late last year. I bought the chart for this back in 2019 at the sample retreat, at the needlework retreat with Fox and uh, Linen and Threads. And this is by Fox and Rabbit Designs. It's a reproduction sampler. And that's it there. And I just love the colours, the peach and orange colours. Um, and it just took me a long time to find the, the right fabric for it that I liked. Um, so yes, I just love the colours. I'm just doing this in DMC. Um, but it does have the suggested Overo Soir, Soir d'Alger alternatives listed as well if you don't want to do DMC. But hey, there's nothing wrong with DMC. Um, and it's easier to get, especially in pandemic times. So I've still got this in the hoop. I'll just, this is a gorgeous Jay's cross stitch lemon butter I think this is called um, it is just it's more yellow than what it shows here I'll see if I can that's more the color it's more lemony yeah it's just so pretty I love it I'm gonna get this again because um, I have another project that this is gonna look really good with um, and I got mushrooms in bloom sent me this cute needle minder when I ordered so that's really lovely it's a little burden so yeah so here is what I'd done. Previously I'd only done the outline in green and this little bit and I actually went in and filled in the flowers and finished this butterfly motif or dragonfly motif. So I was really pleased with that. So that wasn't too bad for I only got to work on it about two days this week so that wasn't too bad and that was after work you know. So yeah so that's that one. And as I've mentioned before, I got these um, luggage tags on um, eBay. They're really thin aluminium ones. And they, when you undo this, you can slide this out and put whatever on the card. And it's got a um, plastic cover as well, so that won't rub off or anything, um, which is good because you don't want it to come off on your stitching. So they come in a range of colours and they were really cheap and they're just perfect for putting, I just added a little um, jump ring to my um, zipper and they just hang off that and so now, because this bag's fully closed, I don't have to unzip it, pull it out, I can just pick that up and go, oh yeah, Sarah Newman, 1822, I know what project that is. So that's been working out really good, so I can definitely recommend that. So my next project was um, Willy Wagtail by uh, Country Threads. Hello, Paris. Paris, come here, puppy. Come here. <laughs> oh, somebody wants to say hello. How did you get a wet butt? What have you been sitting in? She's got a wet butt. She must have been getting near the hose. Hello. I want to say hello. 
Isn't she gorgeous? Paris is a chocolate sable mini labradoodle and she's about 16 weeks old. Sooty! Sooty! No, Sooty's not having it. She's not going to come. Sooty is our six and a half month old um, black sable labrador, labradoodle and she's a medium size. Anyway, back on to stitching, because that's what you're here for, not dogs. <laughs> um, I worked on Willy Wagtail, which is this one here for my mum. And so far I've just got... This is just on plain white Zweigart. It's not very nice, is it? It's, it's not going to be a huge piece. But it is sending me a bit cross-eyed because there's lots of subtle colours. But I've just done the branch and a bit of the wattle. So that's how far I've got with that one. So that's more than I've done for ages on that one. So that was good. Hey, Soot. Come here. Soot, Soot. You gonna come? No. She's like, no. Nah. I just want to trick you. And this one is my Botany Bay sampler, which I also started in 2019 and is a stitch along with Laura of Lola Star Creates podcast. Um, what on earth did I do with the cover? I don't know. Oh, shush, crows. Got me crackers. Anyway, I haven't got the picture, but I've shown it on here before. So if you have a look at last week's, you'll probably see it. So what did I do? I don't think I did much because I was busy with my assignment. I don't know that I actually did anything last week on it. So sorry if you've seen this before. But previously I worked on... The letters coming across here and this really pale pink border in between. Um, these letters, the tree, and this little lion thing. I don't know what it's supposed to be. A weirdly marked dog, a lion, a tiger, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I've done so far and it's on the called for linen. I can't remember what it is, but it's on the chart. So that's that one. I'm using some DMC, some um, of the Weeks Dye Works Call for Threads on that one. And lastly for my whips um, is Celtic Spring, which I don't have a photo of handy. But you will have seen it on my previous video if you go back and have a look. And I managed to just get done one and a bit letters. Oops. So I got this letter finished with the surrounds and partially this one, which is G, which is the last one. And then it comes down on a border coming down here. So that's sort of the width about there coming down. So yeah, so quite pleased with that. I'm enjoying using the treasure braid. It's not very difficult to stitch with. It goes pretty smoothly. So that's that. So my next week's stitch, which is what I work on. So weekends I work on Celtic Spring and um, on Saturdays and Sundays I work on Botany Bay. And then during the week I run my Tiny Decisions app and that's what I'll work on for the following week, during the week. So I ran my decisions app and I came up with the Mirabilia Retreat um, crown design, which was made specifically for our retreat uh, last, uh, yeah, February last year, um, by when Nora Corbett came. So I'll just show you this because it's a, um, I don't think you can even buy this pattern but just a glance it's a crown it's mostly beading and it's just a crown that says Mirabilia Australia 2020 
and it's got tons of beads so I, don't, I think I should get this finished next week maybe it's um that's how much I've got done so far so I've got the writing done and the top part of the crown I'm almost finished and then the rest is beads and then some beading and stitching down here and that's it so I should get plenty of that done next week if not finish it um, it's got all these gorgeous beads and some thread metallic thread yeah and that's just on some random linen I think it's 36 count but uh, was it 32 32 count linen yeah so that's that that's all my whips short and sweet <laughs> um, that's a perfect segue doing beading next week um, I saw this on someone's Instagram I think anyway I went online and found it I can't remember where but if you look up beadsmith sticky bead mat that's the packaging that it came in beadsmith and um, it's a sticky mat for you to hold your needles and your beads so they don't run off which is perfect if you're stitching in front of the TV so it's currently got this plastic covering but when I pull it off it's quite tacky and to clean it you just wash it in a bit of dishwash I think it just says wash in a bit of dishwashing soap um, keep the back plastic in to, um, to keep the base clean um, and put the top cover of plastic on when you're not using it and um, it says when mat starts to gather dust or debris simply rinse it with water and let it air dry and it will refresh and become as sticky as new so very good so that's the beadsmith so that's one of my acquisitions so that'll be perfect for next week if I'm doing beading I actually really enjoy beading I've only done it once and I really enjoyed it sorry something in my eye um, also in acquisitions oops oh, firstly happy mail and I haven't got all of it here I've got some other things but mainly I got this lovely Christmas card of Julia thank you Julia and look what she found all the way over in Canada an Aussie Santa isn't he gorgeous with a little I'll have to find a little bell button to hang off his belt and um, he's cute I might change up his brown to make him look more Aussie as in green and gold or something like that in the Aussie colors but isn't he gorgeous with his um, a Kubra hat and a bit of holly in it and the flag it's gorgeous thank you thank you so much Julia that was such a lovely surprise and I got some tea and oh, and some little charms and um, progress keepers so I'll be definitely um, making those up to use with my stitching so thank you so much Mwah. that was really really happy mail thank you so I enjoyed getting that and things that I ordered for myself because I went on a bit of a buying frenzy um, I think Wayne said we should save some money and then I'm like quick I better buy some stuff in case I, I've got to save my money and I can't buy anymore um, so I, w I wasn't even shopping for this one I was shopping for one of the other ones here the lavender and lace but I come across this lady this fairy and she's called Lily of the Woods, The Dreaming Fairy by Nora Corbett. And, you know, you can't tell a lot from these pictures, but I swear to God, when she's finished with all those treasures and beads on her, on the blossom tree, she's going to look flippin' stunning. So I couldn't resist her. I had to have her in my cart because, um, as Laurie of Mis Mischievous Stitches says, they can't travel alone. So the chart has to have a friend and this was the friend. And she's just gorgeous. Oh, I just love her. 
So I'm looking forward to kidding her up. Maybe next year I can start her. And then what I was trying to get was these lavender and lace. Two came from an Australian shop. I can't remember which ones. And two came from um, the US. What are you eating, Subby? Um, so this lavender and lace one is what started it off. I saw someone actually stitching this on one of the Facebook pages for lavender and lace and it's so pretty when they're stitching it up and just this gorgeous navy blue dress isn't she pretty seriously that's going to be gorgeous I even love that it's sort of 90s flavor to it 80s 90s flavor but yeah just beautiful so I'm looking forward to kitting that up and I got the um, this treasure braid to do for her um, I think there's only one thread that you use and it's just to do the thread going from the quilt to the to a hand so I got that one that's um, called uh, the quilt maker then I couldn't resist getting sweet dreams by lavender and lace Isn't that gorgeous? I thought of that as like, I don't have any kids, but I thought more like my mum and me when I was a baby. So that's why I thought I might get it to stitch up. I got some more treasure braid. What the hell did I get that for? Does that call for it? I don't even, oh yeah, it does, Krynik. Yep. So I've got the Krynik to go with it. I should have just used treasure braid, but anyway. What ifs? I can always change it. And then also um, I got Nantucket Rose because she reminds me of Anna Green Gables when she's grown up. You know where she's riding by the sea? Um, and she's got Edwardian clothes on. So I couldn't resist getting that because she just looks so pretty. Yeah, so um, looking forward to kidding those up. That one's not very big. It's actually only... Ten and a half inches by fourteen and a quarter inches. So yeah, so that's all of my acquisitions. So the last thing, I'll probably think of other things when I get off here, but the last thing, oh, one last whip, which is, goodness me, wait a second. Okay, <laughs> just dropped my crochet hook. How cute is this bag? I got this project bag recently and it's awesome. The handle is the zipper and when you open it up it's got all these compartments but at the moment I'm using it as a sock knitting bag. So I got this gorgeous yarn from Mr and Mrs Rabbit Yarns in the UK and it is so pretty it's soft pinks and peaches with flashes of blue and neon yellow and green and I've paired it up with just some Peyton's baby four ply in pink and I've nearly I actually had got to the stitch in it the kitchener stitch to cast off and cut the thread and everything and then um, tried it on again and it was too short I did the largest size in this pattern it's called the crunkled socks pattern and I did the largest size which is 72 stitches or something which is bigger than what I normally do but I wasn't sure because I haven't knit um, Kay Jones's patterns before anyway it is a bit big on me but I'll just use it as a bed sock like or cozy slipper sock um, so I've done the heel and the cuff in the contrast pink and this is the gorgeous yarn from Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit Yarns and it's just gorgeous. So this lovely textured pattern goes all the way around till you go to the heel flap and gusset and then it just goes on the top and the back is all just normal stocking it. And yeah what I'd done was I got all the way down here to the toe and it wasn't long enough. Um, this heel's actually a bit too big on me because the size is too big, but I can get away with it. Um, but if I knit any more of her socks, I'll definitely go 
to um, the medium size, um, which I think is 64 stitches. Um, so yeah, I love the heel flap and gusset. I love that fabric. Excuse my dirty nails. I was planting stuff recently. Um, yeah, really love it. Love that texture. That is actually really good if you get swollen feet, I think, because I get swollen feet from my um, arthritis. And this is a really nice, comfortable sock that will be stretchy because it's got this sort of rib pattern on the front, staggered rib pattern. And I'm doing this on three millimeter double pointed needles. And I've got one of my little stitch markers here that you can get in my shop. And um, yeah, I love them. So um, what I, I decided to do was be brave and I haven't done it before successfully, but I decided to just pull it, the needles out, rip it back and start again. Um, from this section so I, I ripped it back to a knit row and um, that makes it easier to pick up the stitches so if you ever if you're learning to knit um, my recommendation is practice use a swatch or whatever but practice dropping a stitch and picking it up because once you're confident doing that or unknitting a stitch or unpurling a stitch because once you can read your knitting and you know how to fix some of your mistakes, um, when you do make a mistake, it's no big deal. And there's no tears and tantrums because you've got to start again and you've spent all that time knitting it. Um, also lifelines. So lifelines is where, if you're not confident to rip back, um, lifelines is where you would, while I'm on this level, say I'd finished a section of lace or something, I could run a different colored thread, preferably thicker, through where the needle is just thread it through with a um, darning needle and it sort of replaces the needle almost but you keep the needle in there and you keep knitting and then say you've got a rip back you pull the needle out and when you rip back to that thread the threads holding the stitches for you so you just run your needle through and keep knitting again so um, definitely lifelines are helpful also knit chats on Instagram if you check out their page and you're learning to knit they give they're in America, but they give free online support and advice and guidance on knitting or helping you with your projects with knittings or I think even crochet. So definitely check them out and follow them. Um, they offer a really great service. Um, so my stitches are a little bit loose here, but that's fine. That's no big deal. Um, so yeah, so now I've ripped back, I can just continue stitching and make sure next time that I don't come do the decreases till I've managed to um, check the length. Um, it won't take me very long to finish this sock and then I'll be on to the next one. Um, with picking up stitches, I've got this two and a half millimeter hook, crochet hook. It is perfect for having in your notions pouch or in your project bag. If you drop a stitch, what you have to do is go through the loop where you drop the stitch, the little loop um, that was on previously on your knitting needle. And if there's any loose threads at the back which have been dropped, you just put your hook through the loop, hook onto the loose thread, you taking the bottom one first. So say you've dropped multiple, take the thread through and that's your new loop. And then you do it again and again till you've run out of loose threads and you're back up to the top. And then you just put your needle back in. So there you go, give it a go. And definitely sock knitting, it's not as scary as it looks. It's really quite easy. And wooden needles are the best to start out with. I prefer them overall, um, they're easier on your hands, but wooden needles are more grippy. So when you're first learning to use double pointed needles, I found metal needles were too slippery and so you could sometimes lose stitches off the end. Um, so this helped me get my tension right. Um, and it's important to like really pull tight when you're changing to the next needle because otherwise you'll get a ladder. So it's important to pull it really tight on those first couple of stitches and then you're right then. So yeah, so that's my sock that I've almost finished and I can't wait to have it finished and show you. And I can wear it for winter. 
Um, so yeah, so that's that project. So that's my knitting out of the way. Sorry if you're not a knitter and you're not interested in it, but some people are. Um, right, my final thing is thank you if you don't want to watch further, but I'm going to show Sooty. I'm going to show quickly some new items in my shop. Um, but if you don't want to watch that, that's fine. Thank you very much for coming and stopping by. And if you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you back here next time. Um, if you're still hanging on, here's what I've got in my shop. So I recently added these um, colourful clear embroidery scissors to my shop. I have purple and pink and they have this cute um, on the cover they have this cute daisy design and they've got this handy cover that protects the point and also protects your your whatever you've got in your bag and um, they're super pointy and sharp and someone bought them off me recently and mentioned how um, great they were for unpicking their stitching which is awesome nice and sharp very pointy easy to put on your fingers and I've got big fingers and they're easy and comfortable and I've recently this week finally got in the mail because I was waiting for stuff to come in um, but I got these cute stainless steel daisy charms and these little tiny lanyards and um, I've made these up so when you buy a pair of scissors if you buy a purple pair you'll get a little purple daisy on a chain and if you buy a pink one, you'll get a little pink daisy on a chain. So they're in my shop right now. And then also I've sold out of the black ones of these, but I've got three different types of thread keeps. Um, and they come on these 63 millimeter um, binder rings. So the binder ring is included and they come with charms. So this is a skeleton key with a teapot cabochon and it has um, this faux mother of pearl button, vintage style button and a little crystal heart um, charm that comes with it and you can put your threads on here so it just opens up like that and the other one is um, this one which is a girl walking with her dog in the rain in the park and it comes with a sunshine in the cloud charm and a little crystal purple heart and that's really sweet and that's also on the 63 mil all of the rings are 63 millimeter um, the next ones I get may be smaller because I haven't been able to find ones that can come to me quickly that are bigger. The biggest I can get is 50 millimeters, I think. So we'll see. But um, I can order these, but they just take months to come. So that's really cute. And finally, the last one that I've got in my shop, and I'm just gonna get some more of these binder rings because I have a few more left in stock, but I can't list them in my shop till I get the rings. Um, and the next lot of rings might be smaller if I can't get them quickly, is this cute Paris Eiffel Tower with hydrangeas um, vintage style cabochon in a skeleton key. And it has a little um, a, like plastic bead or acrylic bead leaf and a crystal bead in a like autumn orangey colour amber color yeah so there you go so that's really cute so um they're in my shop now so go and check it out i'll put the link below otherwise you can get to the link via my instagram page which is lisa loves stitching on instagram i'm also on facebook as lisa loves stitching and i'm on etsy as lisa loves stitching so um check me out and have a look at my shop because i've got lots of goodies in there if you're a knitter i've got plenty of progress keepers I've got some Harry Potter needle minders as well as progress keepers um, yeah lots of things so go and check it out and um, I'll see you all again hopefully in about a fortnight 
Till then, happy stitching and I'll catch you all later. Bye!